Welcome back to my channel where I share my experience with schools, jobs, and internships. So uh, last week we talked about my undergraduate studies, which was electrical engineering at the University of Waterloo. So my main focus was on how versatile electrical engineering was because it opens you to so many different job options such as product management, data science, um, engineering, software engineering, hardware engineering, or anything that's in the disciplines of these two, like network engineers. So if you're interested to learn more about electrical engineering and why electrical engineering at the University of Waterloo, feel free to uh, go to my other video. And this video, I'm going to focus my experience with the master's program. So currently, I'm a master's student at the University of Toronto studying human-centered data science. And um, I know a lot of you might not have heard of the program because we are like literally the second cohort that is going to graduate with the concentration of human-centered data science. So uh, this program is actually part of Toronto's iSchool. And um, I believe the school offers like many other disciplines, but the ones that I'm mostly interested in are um, anything tech related. So it was human-centered data science, information systems design, as well as uh, UX design. So these three are the concentrations I looked into. And if I were to describe my master's program in one word, I think it would be flexible. Once you're admitted to the program, you can do so many different options. So you can choose to switch your concentration, like it doesn't need any approval for anyone. As long as you take the courses, you can graduate with any concentration of your choice. So that's one advantage of the program. Once you get in, it doesn't matter what concentration you were initially applying to, you can graduate with a different like degree almost if you choose to. And of course, like you need to do the required courses for that particular concentration of your choice. But like, in my opinion, if you want to learn something, like nothing is uh, impossible. And also like grad school courses are much lighter or easier compared to undergrad courses. So once you get in, the option is in your hands to graduate with the degree that you're looking for. And there are also many different options such as research, co-op or double concentration. So for the research stream, you kind of do a general first year to get a sense of what your particular program or concentration looks like. And it's also the time where you start contacting professors to see if you guys are a good match, like if your thesis idea aligns with a professor's interest, or if the professor has something in mind for you for your particular like uh, path that you want to embark on. So very general first year, lots of networking if you want to do the research option and lots of figuring out um, what kind of research you want to do. And there are also a lot of courses that helps you to do that. I actually took the research course myself where um, there is a professor to guide you like what your like thesis should look like and also give feedback on whether your research method is reasonable. So lots of general training for the first year where you can diversify your interests by taking like courses from different faculties or different concentrations, or you can focus your courses on research, which is like taking courses with the specific professors that you're potentially interested in working with. So you get that kind of office hours to like get to know the professor and let the professor like learn a little bit more about you before you guys actually commit on a project together. And um, if you find 
the area that you're interested in and you get the professor to um, like sponsor you almost then you guys kind of agree on a timeline of when things should start so i guess the standard research timeline is that you start the immediate summer with a reading course with a professor to like kind of consolidate your research idea and then you would officially start working on the research project in fall and generally you have a month to like collect the data that you need and write your final thesis and also like defend by um, generally I think around March the following year so you can graduate within the two-year interval and that's what I know about the research path that's what I considered as well myself but I think now, since my motivations have changed, I want to like take advantage of the co-op program and also maybe consider doing a double concentration. So I can talk about my motivation and why I'm more interested in the co-op and the um, like double concentration. So I think I briefly talked about why I chose to do a master's from my previous video. I have it linked down below. And uh, basically my motivation to do a master's program is because I'm more interested in the high level, like high level aspects of engineering rather than just like diving deep into one single component. I want to understand the overall systems and the overall picture of things. So that's why I chose to do masters. And also because I was exposed to like the concepts of machine learning and artificial intelligence like in my senior year. So I wanted to do a degree program that is like very much gives me the credibility to do something advanced. What made me quickly realize that research was in the past for me is through my two part-time jobs when I was uh, doing my first year of studies. So I was working as a research assistant. I initially applied to the position thinking that I would have some like qualitative research experience through the job, but because of my quantitative background, I actually picked up data projects that is more like quantitative analysis. The projects I did was leveraging the social media data available from Yelp, LinkedIn, and just any um, social media platforms that have public APIs that we can collect data from. And I actually had a couple of like written pieces where I like openly shared my research results and you can also check out the uh, website where I host all of our dashboards so just check me out on LinkedIn if you're curious about what my research was so basically that research job made me realize that my quantitative background is actually way more appreciated compared to like what I can do qualitatively like as a UX researcher. So that's one turning point and the other turning point is that I actually went to a machine learning workshop where I met a professor that is the um, like the chief scientist and natural resources of Canada. So he runs a um, data science consulting group within Natural Resources Canada and uh, through talking to Tan I was able to land an internship with Natural Resources Canada doing like uh, machine learning projects. So that is what got me a little more confident about like coding and a lot more confident about building models myself. These two jobs actually made me realize that even if I'm doing more of a qualitative role where like my core responsibilities are not coding, 
my core values still come from my technical expertise. Like I was able to do two, like additional tasks because I knew coding and I was able to like deliver machine learning modules, machine learning code, in addition to my like day-to-day -day responsibilities. And uh, I was able to collect open source data using public APIs. Um, when my core responsibilities were to kind of just look for the data, not necessarily see coding. So those are the two jobs that made me realize I might be better off staying at a quantitative position. And since I decided that I want to leverage my quantitative background, I think it's more realistic for me to do like a job instead of like working on the research areas of things. And that is why I am now more interested in the co-op concentration, which gives me more work opportunities to explore different job options that I can leverage my quantitative backgrounds in. And then there's also the double concentrations that I'm also interested in because like I said earlier, I was initially interested in the UX design option, but now because I am doing the human centered data science like degree, like I'm still trying to open myself to new things. So UX design, I think is a perfect concentration for anyone who's interested to be a product manager because it kind of trains you systematically in terms of um, like user experience and just anything design oriented. So I think as an engineer, it's important for me to be trained on a different kind of mindset. So when I'm thinking about a problems, I do not just like go from what I'm comfortable with, which is the engineering aspect of things. I can also like think about the design options or I can go from the data science option. So I think having multiple degrees really opens you like for an open mind, if you call, wanna call it. And um, that is my whole speech. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna finish the video right here and see you guys next time.